Right guys, welcome to the video on major muscles. We're gonna just take some time to work our way through the human body and just identify some of the main muscles that are used in sporting movements in particular. Um, understand uh, where they are, what their names are. So nice and simple really, this video. Um, you probably know that there are upwards of 600 muscles in the human body. And you'll be pleased to know we're not going to go through all of them. We're just going to focus on some of the main ones, about 15 or 16 or thereabouts um, in this video. So let's start at the top of the body. Uh, and we'll, we're starting at the front of the body anteriorly. Uh, that's the, that means at the front. And we'll start on the shoulder. And this, this large muscle on the, the side of the shoulder that, that sort of wraps around the top of the shoulder is called the deltoid or the deltoids. And you have obviously one on either side. Um, and they're loosely triangular shaped, which is where it gets its name. So the, the letter delta in Greek, uh, the capital letter at least, is, is a triangle shape. Um, and you might remember from studying geography when you were younger, a river delta, uh, the mouth of a river, is a triangular shape. So the deltoid simply means the triangle shaped muscle that sits on the top of the arm uh, and allows you to um, abduct the arm essentially and the and the deltoids have we sometimes refer to them it's it's one muscle really but because it, it can move in uh, different directions we sometimes call refer to it as the anterior so the front part of the deltoid the medial or the middle part of the deltoid and the posterior deltoid depending on which part of the muscle and the fibers in that part of the muscle that's taking most of the strain in the movement then in the chest, you'll probably know this already, we've got the pectorals, we've got the pectoralis major, the pectoralis minor just underneath um, the pectoralis major, but loosely we're just going to refer to these as the pectorals or pecs, sometimes they're referred. Then we've got in the upper arm, we've got the biceps, biceps brachii, um, the brachii simply means of the arm because we'll see some more biceps in a minute. Um, but biceps brachii, again, if you said biceps, people would know that you were talking about the biceps brachii. Um, and they're, they're there at the front of the upper arm, anterior of the upper arm, um, on top of the humerus. Then we've got the obliques, which are part of the trunk, um, to the side of uh, the next set of muscles, which we'll look at, which is the abdominals. So we've got the abdominals down the centre of the trunk, and then the obliques on the side of the trunk. Now moving down the body, still anterior, still looking at the front of the body, uh, we've got a group of muscles that we're just going to group together here and refer to them as hip flexors. So as the name suggests, these are just a group of muscles at the front of the, uh, the top of the thigh uh, that insert up into the pelvis and allow us to flex at the hip. So that is essentially to bring the femur and close the angle of the femur uh, with relation with regard to the pelvis. Then we've got the quads or the quadriceps, and you'll probably guess from the fact that they're called quad receptors, something to do with the number four here, quad meaning four. So the quadriceps are actually four muscles, strictly speaking, um, that make up the quadriceps on the front of the thigh. We've got the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, and the rectus femoris are the ones that you can see on the diagram. There is another one under, underneath the rectus femoris, uh, which is the vastus intermedius. So let's just make it clear what goes where. So on the outside, so as you're looking at the um, example, the right leg, which is on your left, the muscle on the outside of that leg, uh, closest to the written words quadriceps, that muscle is the vastus lateralis. And lateralis meaning lateral, meaning on the outside. Then the vastus medialis is the muscle on the inside, so closest to the midline of the body, hence the word medialis. Then on top, the large muscle on top, um, where you can see the head of the arrow is pointing to, um, or the circular head of the arrow just rests on, that large muscle that sits over the top and then inserts into the top of the patella, that large muscle is called the rectus femoris, the rectus femoris and then you can't see it on the on the picture but underneath the rectus femoris is the vastus intermedius and obviously intermedius means kind of in the middle intermediate between the lateralis and the medialis so it goes from the left to the right as we look at it vastus lateralis then underneath we've got the vastus intermedius and on top the rectus femoris and then in the middle we've got the vastus medialis 
we continue down the leg um, and we're in front of the shin here um, we've got the tibialis anterior the tibialis anterior so tibialis referring to the tibia and anterior meaning at the front and the tibialis anterior will allow you to um, to move your ankle essentially to lift your toes up uh, which would be dorsiflexion let's look at the back of the human body and the muscles of the back um, right up at the top um, inserting into um, into the back at the bottom of the back of the skull um, and then running all the way down or most of the way down at least uh, the cervical and the thoracic vertebrae we've got this very large muscle called the trapezius and you've probably heard it referred to as the traps so shoulder shrugs in the gym you'll see people doing shoulder shrugs to shoulder shrugs um, in order to build the size of the traps to, to sort of widen the neck from a bodybuilder's point of view uh, and then on the back of the upper arm we've got the triceps so whereas the biceps on the front by means two two heads two headed muscle the triceps you can probably therefore guess is a three headed muscle so there are three if you like heads three places where uh, the triceps originates up on the top of the humerus and then inserts down um, on the ulna past the elbow then moving down the back we've got the latissimus dorsi the latissimus dorsi that word dorsi uh, means of the back um, a dorsal fin on a fish is the fin on the back of the fish dorsal dorsi the latissimus dorsi are the lats on the back um, you'll have heard these referred to as lats lat pull downs and so on other kinds of exercises you might do to build the size and strength of your latissimus dorsi and then um, not particularly well visible on the on the picture you've got on screen we've got the erector spinae the erector spine and these are a series of muscles that run between and along the spine between the vertebrae um, to allow us to lift up the spine and that's where it gets its name erector as in lifted up spinae of the spine so these are muscles that enable us to lift up our spine essentially to make the opposite movement to a trunk curl let's move on moving down the body uh, again we're, we're uh, posterior at the moment we're looking at the back of the body and we're going to group um, the muscles of, of the glutes or the gluteals together gluteus maximus gluteus medius gluteus minimus and so on we're just going to refer to them as a group and refer to them as gluteals then again we'll move down the hamstrings similar to the quadriceps on the front the hamstrings are actually made up of three muscles predominantly mainly three muscles that we we group together and refer to as the hamstrings there are other muscles in and about the, the thighs um, and, and the back of the legs um, but we'll stick with these for now um, we've got the biceps femoris and you remember i said earlier that the biceps um, in the arm are called the biceps brachii which means biceps of the arm um, and now we've got the biceps of the leg or the biceps of the femur so you remember that that, that large bone in the in the uh, upper leg in the thigh is the femur and the biceps femoris is the biceps of the femur so that's the um, that's the large muscle um, that you can see on the diagram there that runs kind of on the top of the other two muscles of the hamstrings the other two muscles fairly lengthy names are semitendinosus semitendinosus and semimembranosus semitendinosus and semimembranosus and as you look at them on the on the screen now um, on your left so on the left of the uh, of the body there on the left leg on the lateral side uh, we've got semitendinosus then centrally we've got biceps femoris and then in the middle of the body um, closest to the right leg we've got semimembranosus then we move down to the calf muscles there are two main muscles in the calf um, we have the gastrocnemius often wrongly pronounced gastrocnemius there is a c in the middle of the word gastrocnemius and that's the the two-headed muscle that sits on top of the calf muscle and then underneath that a longer flatter muscle um, sits underneath the gastrocnemius which is called the soleus the soleus okay moving on um, let's just briefly consider the muscles around the wrist um, 
on either side of the wrist there, there are in fact lots of muscles that help us to move and to manipulate our wrist and our hand and so on and again we're not going to get into the detail there's plenty of them and you can study those in your own time if you, if you want to if you want to go a bit deeper but let's just categorize them as wrist flexors and pronators and those will be the uh, muscles on the front of the forearm um, they are the anterior part of the forearm uh, and they will enable you to flex and to pronate the wrist to flex and to pronate the wrist and you can see flexion on the diagram on the right is when the palm moves towards the front of the forearm the palm moves towards the closes the angle towards the front of the forearm that classes as flexion of the wrist and obviously the opposite is true on the other side of the arm we've got wrist extensors and supinators on the back or the posterior of the forearm and their role predominantly is extension and of course supination but extension where the palm the angle between the palm and the front of the forearm is greater so the back of the hand is moving towards the back of the forearm that will class as extension of the wrist Let's wrap this video up just by talking about how we locate muscles and some of the language that we need to use in order to effectively locate the muscles and where, we, uh, where we're describing them, beginning and ending and where they come from and where they go to and so on. All of the muscles in the body can be given, their location can be given in relation to the skeleton. Okay, Because as we know, muscles are attached to the skeleton in order to enable movement. And either end of a muscle where the muscle attaches to bone where it is usually the the nearest end so nearest either to the midline of the body um, or anteriorly uh, but predominantly towards the midline of the body where the or is what we call the origin let me just explain that slightly more clearly so of a muscle and you've got the biceps brachii as your example on the screen here um, the biceps brachii begins somewhere and it ends somewhere. And we say that it's beginning, the point where it begins is whatever end of the muscle is closest uh, to the midline of the body. Okay, and we refer to that as the proximal end. And so whatever end of the muscle is proximal, we refer to that attachment as being the origin of the muscle. We conceive of it as being the starting point of the muscle and it moves away from the proximal end to a to the further away to its attachment okay and that attachment is referred to in technical language as the insertion of the muscle so we have an origin and we have an insertion and it may be that a muscle an individual muscle has multiple origins and sometimes even multiple insertions Okay, so the origin is the bone where a muscle begins, and it's usually proximal, so closest to the midline of the body, and it runs along a bone, across a joint, of course, and then attaches or inserts on the furthest, furthest from the midline of the body, and we refer to that end of the muscle as the distal end. So the origin is proximal, where a muscle begins, and its insertion is distal where the muscle ends or attaches to the bone that it's moving. A couple of quick examples here, the biceps brachii, the origin of the biceps brachii for both heads, remember I said biceps means two headed muscle, it has two origins and both of those originate, but that muscle has two origins, both of which are on the scapula. And it runs across over the top, and anteriorly over the humerus and it inserts on the radius in the forearm so it actually it's a multi-joint muscle it crosses both the shoulder joint and also the elbow joint and so it's key movement it does make several movements but its key movements are elbow flexion also he might refer to as a bicep curl and forearm supination so forearm supination is when you turn um, turn your hand to face upwards so let's say you're holding your your arm out in front of you as if to hold a bowl of soup that hand now is in supination i don't know if that helps you remember it's supination as if you were holding a bowl of soup and then finally your final example um, here in terms of how we describe locations of muscle is the trapezius so we've got the trapezius or the traps uh, on the on the upper back posteriorly um, and the origin of the trapezius is all the way down several so there are um, some um, 
connections, some attachments at the, at the base of the skull, at the base of the cranium, and also several attachments along the vertebrae. Um, and it, it actually slightly varies, um, but most of the vertebrae down through the cervical and the thoracic regions will have an attachment um, of the trapezius. Um, and that's where the muscle is said to originate because it's closest to the midline of the body. So it originates down the vertebral column and, and slightly in the cranium as well, the, the base of the cranium. And then it inserts, the, it goes to and touches another bone and inserts and attaches to another bone. Its insertion is uh, the clavicle and the scapula. And so because it it inserts on the clavicle and the scapula when it contracts it enables us to elevate that means to lift upwards to rotate that means to turn the uh, the scapula at an angle and also to retract the scapula that is to move the scapula posteriorly that is further back so we can elevate rotate and retract the scapula using the trapezius because its origin is on the vertebrae and the cranium and its insertion is the clavicle and the scapula so we've looked at the major muscles of the human body. Um, obviously, we haven't covered them all. We've done a fair few. Um, and then we've talked briefly about how we actually explain where a muscle begins and ends and the technical language we need to use to be able to do that. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.